Hey, I'm Joe Prolog Bash Lansford, design lead on maps and answering a couple questions today. So, first one is about uh, when is our next map? Soon TM. Uh, it's in the works, so we're a couple beyond that. Um, maps are a big part of what keeps our game fresh, and we don't plan on stopping making them anytime soon. Um, next question is about picks and bands. So uh, this isn't something that we plan to implement for uh, normal competitive or unrated or anything like that. We sort of value a broad breadth of experience um, and learning, expressing skill on all of the different maps. Uh, we do think it's uh, an appropriate system for like pro play, like you see right now, for example, where um, you know really deep strategic pools and agent compositions and whatnot all come into play. Uh, so, we hope that that's a system we can implement in the future whenever um, we launch our tournament mode. Um, yeah, so thank you. That's it. How long does it take to conceptualize, develop, and release an agent? So, normally from start to finish right now, it takes about 12 to 14 months. Uh, from the first conversation to when an agent is released. And our early conversations are focused around uh, what is the design space going to be? What are the new interesting mechanics? What are the types of players that we think are going to enjoy and have fun playing this character? And once we've got a good idea of the gameplay, you know, gameplay being like Neon can run and concuss people, maybe throw some walls in there. Uh, we start to take a look at what are some thematic spaces. So that's going to be like, what's some concept art explorations? What's some backstory going to be? Um, and work on that for a couple months. And then once there's a good foundation there, then we start throwing all of that stuff in game, bring in, you know, 10, 15 people and start building the agent. And that, that time when we're building the agent in, in engine, in game, to what you see in Valorant is like the last six months of the process. So the first, you know, six months primarily focused around figuring out who this character is going to be. The last six months, how are we going to bring this to life and solve all the nitty-gritty problems around that? Okay, here we got. Uh, in the future, will there be an agent that has a disadvantage of height? For example, there's Yordles and Lol. No, it's kind of inappropriate for a tactical shooting game like Valorant, but in terms of crosser settings are the things. But if that concept is taken into consideration, will there be a way to make it happen? Well, on a serious note, all of our characters are the same height, and we are, as, well, as far as we know, going to keep that intact for a lot of the the real tactical shooter considerations of thinking about this is like a hyper competitive game. Now that said, there, who knows, there might be creative solutions in the future. Maybe it's, you know, uh, two short robots standing on top of each other. Who knows? We can do a lot of creative things, but ultimately uh, they all have to stay the same height. Hey everyone, I'm Riot Evermore, the competitive designer on Valorant. I'm here to answer the question about competitive and unrated having a map selection process or priority system. Right now we don't plan to have any type of map pick or priority system for competitive play. The reason is that we really want to reinforce or push this idea that the best way to climb ranked is by learning every map and being able to play Valorant as a whole, um, and not specialize or try to avoid certain maps just to climb the ranked system. And the reason this also applies to Unrated uh, is that Unrated is often a stepping stone or onboarding for new players into the competitive experience. And we don't want players to play through Unrated or practice and get ready to play competitive. And then when they step into competitive, they see a map they've never seen before, or there's like a certain meta or maps they have to avoid uh, in order to play competitive effectively. So we really uh, are straying away from kind of that like picking or priority system um, of like map selection in the competitive process. But we are exploring a map pick and ban system for our tournament competitive mode that we're working on. We view map picks and bans as a good answer to the team structure and competitive atmosphere of playing on a team and coming up with team comps and assessing the enemy team and determining like, oh, maybe I want to ban this map because 
you know, they have a SOVA and we want to try to force them on to split. Or different various competitive reasons where you might practice a bunch, uh, you know, a strategic execute on bind and you really want to try to get bind because you know your team's really good at that. We, we think that the map pick and ban process is really good for this kind of uh, atmosphere and competitive play of like the, the team based uh, tournament system that we're exploring. So keep an eye out for that and I hope that answers any questions around the whole map uh, priority system or process we have for competitive play. Thanks and have a good one. Hi, my name is Jack Flannery and I'm a product manager on the premium content team. Well, I don't have anything specific to announce at this time, what I can say is that we're constantly looking for ways to make Valorant feel more rewarding regardless of how much you spend. We want those items to be both inherently awesome, but also a means of showcasing who you are and what you've done in Valorant. Things like Asian contracts and Battle Pass are great examples of ways for players to both earn awesome rewards, but also showcase things like their investment in a particular agent, or the time they spend playing Valorant if you better. Hey everyone, I'm Sarah. I'm the producer on the social and player dynamics team here on Valorant and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about smurfing. So the case that we're trying to avoid is a player jumping into one account, getting penalized, and then jumping onto another account and creating that same loop over and over. So what we're going to be doing is automating that process so that we detect all the accounts and penalize all of them. We're currently investigating this, so look out for a little bit more information from us later on in the year, uh, and I'm going to hand it over to my partner in crime, Brian, to talk a little bit more about this topic. Hey everyone, Brian here. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about Smurfs, but specifically how they relate to the rank system. So in Valorant, we've always had a way to detect an account that we believe is overperforming for their current rank, and then we try to accelerate their climb up the ladder so that they're in more fair matches faster. In the next month or two, we have plans to roll out a automated system that does this type of detection even earlier on in a Smurfs account so that we can prevent them from getting into unfair matches even faster. Finally, one of the most commonly stated reasons as to why players say they Smurf is to be able to play competitively with their friends. It's one of the reasons why we made a change a couple of patches ago to allow anybody to 5-stack with anybody regardless of their rank. We're going to continue to explore options to allow players to play competitively with their friends regardless of their skill level and we'll be sure to update you more on that later this year.